you uh, order something in the inter internet, they check out your, your device with which you log in, they check out the, all the information they have about you and the pricing you personally get might differ from person to person based on the device you're checking in and uh, all the background information they have on you. So smart digital pricing is also a very new model which uh, might uh, change a lot in our world. And uh, if I look at some customers in China, 40% of toilet paper they are selling is sold via e-commerce and not in the supermarket anymore. So the world is changing here. Could be an opportunity, could be a threat. During the last decades, we have seen a steady global growth and the good thing is that poverty is on decline. Of course, it is still, it is still there, but the percentage of people which live below a certain daily or monthly uh, allowance is getting smaller. And that is supporting cons consumption and that is supporting growth, uh, which again is a positive trend. Um, so, overall, I guess, the economic success is paying off, but we have to make sure that that is also divided in a reasonable and in a fair way between all parties, so that the, the freedom uh, remains. Difficult for our business certainly is, when you look at the raw material, that pulp prices have been, or are, at a very unhealthy level. And, uh, it looks like there is not too much capacity coming on stream over the next few years. So we have to expect that pulp prices remain high and that is a burden for many paper mills uh, around the globe at the moment. And of course, with, you know, packaging booming at the moment, but also people talking about paper as a construction material, people talking about cellulose fibers for biofuel, for example, uh, there is huge competition around fiber. And when I said earlier that there is a window opening that paper can substitute plastic, one pre prerequisite is that fiber is available at a reasonable cost. So uh, that is something we need to manage. And another trend that I see is that uh, the competence technical competence in the paper mills is declining. So we really have to think how we can keep competence in the mills. And one thing I'd like to mention, you know, when we look for example at the carbon dioxide emissions, there is, and that's my personal view, two ways to cope with it. You can ignore the problem and you can deny the facts like some great Western leaders do it at the moment. <laughs> or you can tackle those problems and uh, face them, work on them and find solutions for them. Maybe even develop products which differentiate you in future because you have environmentally feasible solutions. And I believe that is the much better way to do it. Face the problems right now, work on those and develop solutions for the future. Don't ignore it and, uh, and take the, the easy path on short term. Take maybe the rough path the rough road on short term, make your homework and be the winner in future. Paper is renewable. We don't have a, a raw material here which needs a few hundred million years to develop. Paper grows within sometimes one year, sometimes it takes a few decades. But uh, we have a great product here with a very, very good reputation. There is already, and I mentioned it earlier, an advanced recycling cycle for paper which is working, which is accepted, and I believe again that is a huge benefit for our industry. Paper is biodegradable, and that really makes the difference to plastic, which if you find it in the ocean, will still be around in a few hundred years. Paper will be gone within weeks or months, and that really makes a difference, and we should exploit that benefit. And I believe it is, it is seen in, in public, it is seen in society, but maybe we have to work even harder to pronounce that benefit, which is, which is unique. There are many new applications for paper, 
Uh, and I believe we have to be creative and think where else can we apply paper in order to even grow our business, to even grow our industry. We should be, uh, we should be creative there, we should be smart and really exploit this. And last but not least, and it was mentioned as well, the paper industry is a huge industry globally. I mean, it stands for a trillion dollars of sales and it employs millions, millions of people globally. So it is very important for society, it is very important for uh, business, for countries. And uh, so from that point of view, I believe we have a very, very good product and a very solid basis. This is also reflected in the numbers here, and you see that paper on a global scale, this is paper production is still growing. Last year we passed basically 430 million tons of paper globally. And if you look at 2018, nearly one quarter is still graphic papers, and uh, I will get back to that in a moment. Of course, graphic papers have been declining globally. Um, We'll talk about that a little, a little later. But we see also that uh, it was bottoming out, maybe the decline, and we see that there is still need for wood-free, uh, uncoated papers, and there are graphical paper grades which are still in need and which are still used. <coughs> then there is, of course, a huge number, basically 60% uh, of border packaging, and the e-commerce really is driving the growth of those grades. And I cannot imagine how our society, how our industry would survive right now without boredom paper um, in, uh, for packaging purposes. It is very essential and it is a, a sustainable uh, product with uh, the recycling cycles that we have. Then there is, of course, uh, tissue at a lower level, 40, uh, 40 million tons globally but growing nicely, as you can see. And uh, that is one of the grades that will continue to grow. I don't see any substitution there, you, you know, so um, that is definitely a focus area. And then, of course, there are specialty papers, and uh, again, on a lower level, but they also grow nicely uh, over the decades, and there is potential there. Now, what is the situation when we look at where investment takes place? Maybe not surprisingly, 60% of investment uh, comes from Asian customers, and that is, uh, a lot of that is, of course, China. Then there is quite a remarkable activity still in Europe, um, not so much in the rest of the world. If we look into the regions, Asia, uh, in the last 20 years, basically, the paper production has doubled. Of course, of, that, uh, of those 230 million tons, 120 million tons is China, so that is the dominating market. And China has grown over the last few years 5%, with a little more than 5% on the paper production side. But in the last three years, from 2017 to 19, 16 million tons of new capacity came into the market, one six. And that is, of course, uh, an enormous number, and uh, I would even say maybe an unhealthy number, because we see some overcapacity, but we see some, something else on top. China uh, needs approximately 80 million tons of recycled paper per year. They collect 50 million tons themselves, and they have been importing 30 million tons per year, mainly from North America and Europe to a certain degree. Now, uh, in 2017, the Chinese government decided that they want to stop the import of waste. Uh, and waste includes plastic, but it also it includes waste paper, many waste paper grades. They got so much mixed waste from North America with rubbish inside that they just couldn't stand it anymore, and they said stop. And they have been very, very strict and the 13 million tons of import came down to 15, maybe 12 million tons in 2018. Which means that they have a lack of fiber in China. And the lack is so severe that customers stop the execution of orders for new paper machines. That they are shutting down paper machines um, in a sizable scale because they don't have fiber. 
And that investment now is going instead of China to Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia or Indonesia. Uh, so we see really a severe situation in China at the moment. And uh, I, uh, I see right now only one or two new paper machine projects for the next 12 months to come, which is a situation that we have not had in the last 20 years. So that is quite, uh, has quite an, an impact and uh, could be an opportunity, but we need to watch that carefully. When we look at uh, North America, you see that uh, paper production came down quite a bit, from uh, 120 million tons to 90 million tons roughly now. That is uh, mainly driven by the graphic decline, and in 1998, from that year, newsprint consumption in North America started to decline. They use the, uh, the iPad, the iReader, they don't, they don't read the newspapers anymore. And uh, so many graphical mills in North America have disappeared. Uh, and that is basically why that number went down so badly. Uh, there have been many conversions in the meantime that the graphic paper machines have been converted to uh, packaging paper machines. But interestingly, they also started to invest in new capacity and uh, recently we've seen quite a few new machines from Bread Industries, for example. Uh, Westrock has just ordered a new Craftliner machine. We are executing a new packaging, a complete new packaging line for uh, Green Bay Packaging in Wisconsin. We are executing a complete packaging line for Grubogondi in Mexico. So there is new investment in, uh, in North America and we'll see 3 million tons of new capacity coming in there packaging capacity, and that is actually being absorbed. And there is also still growth in tissue in North America, ultra premium, so very, very uh, sophisticated uh, tissue qualities. So North America, to a certain degree, has been back, or is back, uh, after maybe 20 years of no investment. That is interesting as well. Now what we see too is that, based on the severe situation in China, Chinese customers are coming to North America. I mean, APP is there since quite a while. They have bought pulp mills, they have bought tissue mills, they have many converting mills there. Uh, but now also, some people, for example, announced uh, a pulp mill investment in Arkansas, together with the packaging line. There is now Shanlin uh, talking about the investments in North America. And Nine Dragon, for example, I'm sure you heard it or you read it, has bought uh, the Byron Mill in Wisconsin and they bought the Rumford Mill in Maine. Really old, ass old assets, but they want to get a grip on pulp, they want to get a grip on paper to export it to China, and they want to get a grip on the North American market. So uh, things are changing interestingly there. So, a um, very interesting situation as well in, in Europe. There is activity and the paper is growing there. And despite roughly 6 million tons of uh, packaging paper coming into the market, the market has absorbed everything. There's no overcapacity and prices have, uh, have been very, very healthy since at the same time, basically, uh, waste paper prices have been down. I didn't mention that before. When China stopped the uh, import of mixed waste, the prices for mixed waste in North America went negative, which meant you had to pay to get rid of it.